Let's talk about ellipse. Okay, an ellipse is the set of all points in a plane such that the sum of the distances from two given points in the plane, called the foci, is constant. In other words, I could take a point on the ellipse and find the distance from that point to one of the foci, add it to the distance from that point to another foci, and it will always be the same no matter which point I use on the ellipse. Now the center of the ellipse is the midpoint of the line segment joining its foci. Now in our video, all of our ellipse will have a center at the origin, zero, zero. Now let's talk about the major axis. The major axis of an ellipse is the cord that passes through the foci and has its endpoints on the ellipse. And the minor axis is the cord that contains the center of the ellipse and has its endpoints on the ellipse and is perpendicular to the major axis. Now, an ellipse has a quadratic equation in two variables. So I will have an x squared and a y squared. Do you notice it's equal to 1? I also have a's and b's. A is larger than B. If A is under the x squared term, I will have a horizontal ellipse. If A is under the y squared term, I will have a vertical ellipse. Let's look at that a little closer. The x squared term has a larger denominator. So it is a horizontal ellipse. Or we could say that the major axis is horizontal. In this ellipse, the larger denominator is under the y squared term, so it is a vertical ellipse. I could also say the major axis is vertical. So let's look at this ellipse. The larger denominator is under the x squared term. So my a squared is 25. I could write 25 as 5 squared and 9 is 3 squared. So a is 5 and b is 3. We could quickly graph this. Under the x squared is 25, which is 5 squared. So on the x-axis, I will move to the right 5. I will also move to the left 5. These are the vertices of this ellipse. Under the y squared term, I have 9, which is 3 squared. So on the y-axis, I will go up 3, and I will go down 3. These are the co-vertices. That is my ellipse. But let's talk more about this ellipse. We have talked about A's and B's. Well, let's talk about C, which deals with the foci. So if I have a horizontal ellipse, my foci will be on the x-axis. So the foci, C0, and the point negative C, 0. Now look at these foci. They are on the y-axis. This is a vertical ellipse, and the foci are at 0 C and 0 negative C. The major axis is vertical. Well, what about the length of the major and minor axis? The length of the major axis is 2a. Well, a in our ellipse was 5, so 2 times 5 is 10. Or you can notice from the picture that if you go 5 to the right and 5 to the left, the total distance of the major axis is 10. Now, the length of the minor axis is 2 times b. In this case, b is 3. So 2 times 3 is 6. Or you may notice from our graph, if I go up 3 and if I go down 3, that is a total of 6 units. Okay, but what about the foci? How can I find the points of the foci, or C? Well, given an ellipse that its center is at 0, 0, 
and its foci are on the x-axis, plus or minus c0, which means I go to the right c and to the left c, and the x-intercepts are plus or minus a0, and the y-intercepts will be 0 plus or minus b. The equation of this ellipse is x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared is equal to 1, where b squared is equal to a squared minus c squared. I could also write c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared just by doing a little bit of algebra and solving for c squared. Let's go back to the ellipse that we were working with. I had my vertices, I had my covertices, but what are my foci? Well, c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. a squared is 25 and b squared is 9. So c squared is equal to 16, which means c is plus or minus 4. Or remember, the foci is the absolute value of c. So if I go four units to the right of the center of my ellipse, one of my foci will be four zero. And if I go four units to the left of the center, I find that my other foci is negative four zero. So to sum it up, if I have a horizontal ellipse, the larger denominator is under the x squared term, which means my vertices are at a0 and negative a0. Also notice that my foci are on the x-axis. And of course, my major axis is horizontal, and the length of it is 2 times a. My covertices are on the y-axis, and they would be 0b and 0, negative b. And the length of my minor axis would be 2 times b. For a vertical ellipse, notice that the a is under the y-squared term. Therefore, my vertices are on the y-axis. My vertices are 0, a and 0, negative a. Once again, notice the foci are on the major axis, which in this case is vertical. The length of the major axis is still 2 times a, and the length of the minor axis is still 2 times b. Now, on the next video, we are going to work problems involving ellipse.